Welcome everybody. Today I'm going to be installing some butcher block countertops. You'll see here I'm going to grab some tools. Uh, I've been using this centipede sawhorse for several years. It's a little bit flimsy, but pretty good value really. I think I got it on clearance at Lowe's. It's the four foot by eight foot version, and uh, I don't think they sell that one anymore. So this countertop came from Lowe's. It's the Allen and Roth. Um, I didn't really like it. I thought it was pretty low quality. Um, there's a lot of exposed finger joints like on the edges and it doesn't really have much of a round over. Um, the, the butcher blocks that I've done in the past were from Menards and they were better quality. I was surprised, but these, uh, these Allen and Roth butcher blocks, they're kind of junk. They're not flat. Um, I even had a little bit of trouble with alignment in the corners. Um, you'll see me here. I'm using a, uh, trend combi jig for worktops this is a european style worktop jig and this allows for the joint that you see me make here in this video it's a some people call it a mason's miter where it kind of starts as a miter and then turns and goes straight i like this um, style of jig they're not very common in the u.s uh, i haven't really seen anybody else using them but I bought this from Amazon, I think, several years ago, and I've done several jobs with it. I use it for laminate. Uh, I've done several butcher block jobs with it. I always have good results. The corners turn out, the corners turn out pretty great, and I, I just uh, prefer the look. You know, I don't really want to butt them to each other, and I don't really want to do a full miter. A full miter actually wastes a lot of material. You'll end up with you know, needing two linear feet more. Um, so I get this joint cut and then I decide to scribe it to the wall. This wall's not very flat. Uh, this is a project house that my stepson is finishing up and he's been doing a lot of work himself. He's been working on drywall and stuff like that himself. This is his first try. Um, so after I scribe it, I'm gonna go ahead and use a cordless hand planer to cut to my scribe line. And I'm, if you notice, I've I've got a nice angle on that. I'm kind of beveling the backside so that the bottom of the countertop won't hit the wall before the top of the countertop. I'd like to kind of make a nice bevel there. That makes it a little bit cleaner. Um, there, I just went ahead and gave it a couple taps because there's pretty big, pretty big bow in that wall. Now, uh, here we are cutting the male side, and on this on this joint, the male side has to be cut upside down. So. I look at the owner's manual when I'm doing these uh, countertop joints, the, the book that came with it, or I look up the book online sometimes, and uh, I just try to make sure that I have everything oriented correctly when I'm cutting it, but we'll be uh, cutting the sink in next, and that's it. I used a track saw to cut all the straight cuts, 